computer. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, July 17th, 2022. And I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Aim for the eyes on the Wombat. Uh, or the head, just generally. <laughs> and our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs. Hello, welcome. Ahoy! Uh, Sky from Texas, welcome. Greetings. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Uh, in Knoxville, the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Narrative versus evidence. Dun, in, dun, the dun. Greatest, <laughs> in the greatest combat since all time. They should make a movie out of it. In fact, we're going to be talking about that today. But that is what I'd like to call the main dish. Let's have a nice little appetizer of pasta led by our own uh, Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Go for it. Roman. Roman. Our noodly lord, who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive mm. us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us some garlic bread, Nice. For thine are the meatballs and the sauces and the grog. Whenever and ever. Raw. I think there's a really good joke on the internet. It's like, hey, have you heard about the good news? He's like, yeah, garlic bread. It's free. It's it's really great, isn't it? It's 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 mm -hmm. right there for you. Uh today we're gonna be talking about narrative versus evidence and how it relates to the movie industry, particularly is re is religion or how do I put it, are the movie industry implicated in the persistence of religion? And does movies- Or superstitious maybe, thought. And superstitious thoughts. Uh, you know, but I guess it would be important for us to, one, catch up, see how we've been over the last week, two, get our definitions in order, and then three, really delve into this topic as best as we can. So we're going to do what I like to do, a nice little recap. Joe, Joe Sky, how you been? Good to catch up with you. How you been? I've been good. I've been working a lot. I uh, have a new project that I'm investigating doing. I'm thinking about uh, writing a little little book uh, on what I call the dialogue. Uh, believers and unbelievers talking in a non a non-confrontational way. Nice. Cool. I dig that. We need it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think dialogues like that are always really wonderful to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, I got caught in that rabbit hole, but it is a it is a fun thing to come back to every now and then. Dread Pirate, how you been? How is the I've been uh, chaos? I've been really good. I uh, was just out in the shop this morning, actually, and okay. I don't know if you can see this here. This is a Ooh. an egg cup. It's an egg cup I made out of a walnut. And oh, you can cool. see the inlay there. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. actually made with eggshells. Really? Wow. Can you put yeah, it on cool. camera? Can is it like chopped eggshells or is it like a single shell? Like how is it powder? Like what am I what's that white part? The white part, the white part at the very top, the inlay. Yeah, that's uh Turn that's, side um yeah. eggshell. Okay, pieces of eggshell. Yeah, yeah, ground up eggshell that I put in a blender. Okay, okay, okay. nice. Yeah. Very cool. And then I used a guitar string to burn that mark there. I think it was a an E string. Excellent. Yeah. Nice. Nice work. Oh, it's really really nice. It's very Thank cool. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a cup for an egg basically, right? Or am I misinterpreting? It is a cup, and you, it also doubles as a uh, shot glass, right? So nice. You know, after you've had enough boiled eggs, you can down a shot of whiskey or scotch or have a scotch egg. And that's breakfast. And that's, that's breakfast, breakfast for champions. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, how you been? It's good to catch up with you too. Oh, fine. I haven't got my motorcycle out this week and I feel guilty about that, but I need no. to. Okay. Um, 
my, nie- my nephew is up visiting us, so, so that's really nice. nice. Uh, he's sitting off screen monitoring what I say because he can't hear anything else. But uh, it's always good to see him. Nice. Um, um, working. Yeah, it's boring. And uh, I've been getting into chess more and more, uh, doing, playing on, online against bots and doing chess puzzles. So okay. That's a lot of fun. You know, I can tell you, for as many video games as you play, I think you could find more riveting experiences in terms of gameplay than chess. I'm, I'm calling some shots out. I feel like chess... Oh, we've been, my, my nephew has a quest, too, so and when nice. he's here, you know, we're, we're, we're loading up the chess, the quest twos and playing a lot of shoot-em-ups and, nice. and playing some nice. golf, too. Okay, so you got the whole spread. I, sure. I like it. I like a man of variety. Uh, for me... Uh, I'm going to bring up a little story. I had some hard times this week and I want to, it reminded me of a parable and the parable went one day, a man was drowning and a boat came by and asked the man, do you need help? And the man said, no, thank you. God will save me. And then another boat came by and asked the man, do you need help? And the man said, no, thank you. God will save me. And then the man drowned and died and he went to heaven. He asked God, God, why didn't you save me? And God said, because I like drowning people. I like drowning people. <laughs> Haven't you read my book? That's, I, not the, yeah. that's not the punchline I was waiting for. <laughs> Amen. All right, guys, we're going to be talking about narrative versus evidence, which I feel is a really interesting topic brought to us by our own John Richards. Uh, he'll probably be joining us later on today. But I want to talk about what we mean by these words. What do we mean by narrative and what do we mean by evidence? And before we start blaming the movie industry for anything, let's try to get those out of the way. And I'll throw out my two uh, examples, evidence and narrative. If I was trying to define those two, I find narrative to just be sort of like uh, a story in, in it's a series of claims to support uh, 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 a story, right? Whereas mm-hmm. evidence is a series of claims that can be uh, presented to support like something that happened in reality. So a narrative is supporting a story. Evidence is supporting what I feel is a case to be made of, for something that may have happened in reality or not. Well, Maybe that's a bit also, too abstract. What do you think? Well, I think we would also say that evidence would have to be uh, testable. It okay. Have to be testable from, from any perspective. Basically, any, anybody doing the same experiment would get the same results. Mm. And uh, as far as narrative, um, it's, you know, anecdotal evidence is, is a mainstay of, of most religions. Um, you know, people tell them uh, just so stories about this or that and, and to help uh, bolster their belief. And if you think about it, uh, the Bible is just full of anecdotal uh, stories that present uh, situations where it would bolster your, your belief. Mm. Fred, what do you think? Um, I would characterize it this way, that uh, evidence, um, the, uh, so the narrative starts with the conclusion, whereas evidence supports a conclusion. It makes sense? Evidence supports a conclusion. Wait, wait more time. What would be a narrative then? So a narrative begins with a conclusion. So a person writing a book knows how it's going to end. So a narrative tells a linear tale um, in support with, of that. with the end already figured out. Mm. Uh, so all the all the events that happen essentially conspire um, to deliver the the conclusion. Right. Whereas evidence supports a conclusion that's only determined after sufficient evidence has been pulled together to uh, support a hypothesis. I guess uh, is a better way of characterizing it. Makes okay. sense. You know, another thing I might throw out is if you're like George R. R. Martin, uh, not to call more shots, or if you're a bad writer, typically you write without re- understanding what the conclusion is going to go. And so it ends up uh, just a meandering story, right? But I do say that narratives are built with an agenda in mind, right? Yeah. Like there is a underlying, there is an underlying desire when you're making a narrative ideally to like sell an idea or to make money or to have something that is beyond just the story itself. Whereas evidence I feel is solely for the, 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 the purpose of demonstrating uh, a fact of reality or, or making a point 
but there's no other greater agenda behind it. Like, for example, I can find evidence for climate change. And I can also tell you in a narrative sense that we're going to live forever, right? And my agenda for living forever is like, hey, I want people to feel good and listen to me and make profit. Whereas evidence might support something that I totally don't want to happen. Like, I don't want this world to be like, you know, frying apart. And it is a scary thing to think about. So like evidence very much doesn't care about my concerns, my agenda, but narratives are almost fine tuned to tell the best story. Well, that, by, yeah, yeah, almost by definition they are. Mm. Uh, okay. Narratives are created by agents, right? There it is. There's, yes, there's, yeah. uh, there's mm -hmm. a de additional agency in a narrative compared to evidence, right? I think that's, that's probably the, one of the best ways to put it. Sky, do you have one way on this? Do you have a difference well, between narrative and evidence? Um, as a writer, I would simply say that narrative is the art of telling the story. Mm. It's, it's more than just the content, it's the presentation. There are good storytellers and there are awful storytellers. Uh, as far as evidence, I don't think I could do better than what Dredd said. It's a tool. It's essentially just a tool. That's it. Uh, it's not so much telling a story. It's trying to figure out the world around you. It's the things that we can build to tell the world around us. So then we see when we look at a movie, this, or particularly fiction, movie, works of fiction, right? Um, this, this clear and compelling desire by people to watch and be entertained uh, in a narrative sense, even if it means they have to forego their grip on reality. In fact, there's a concept when you watch a movie called suspension of, of, of belief, right? Oh, suspension uh -huh. of disbelief. Of disbelief? Okay, right. suspension yeah. of disbelief. That makes more sense, yeah. And it's, sim it's simply put, mm -hmm. I am willing to be fooled if you can get there entertain there's, me. There's, yes, there's good yeah. Well, And there are people who are very- some Stray audio in there. Yeah, I I'm willing. To, I'm willing to be fooled if you can entertain me. And I, it's, it's both a fun thing to do if you can control it. So that way you can enjoy like a good narrative. But I also feel like it might be difficult for certain people to turn off. So that when they walk out of a movie theater, they're like, yeah, but the force could actually be something that exists if there's a multiverse. And if the multiverse exists, there must be a world where there is an Iron Man. And maybe I can blink my eyes twice and, and then no Kung Fu in some weird, strange capability universe i feel uh -huh. like i feel like that's where we start to get into these strange uh conditions where we may not be employing critical thinking in a capacity where we could um what do you guys think larry do you think I'll, I'll throw the question at you first do you think then that movies can be implicated for the persistence of religious thinking oh of course and in particular the religious movies um mm. you know the all the <clears throat> What do you call it? The Ten Commandments, the uh, greatest story ever told, that kind of yeah, thing. Uh, all of that stuff. But in particular, the ones that really grab you, like uh, The Exorcist, and scare the heck out of you, you know, drive these fears home. Uh, my my older brother Steve uh, said that he went home after seeing The Exorcist, Exodus, and started reading the Bible again, and uh, started praying a lot more because of wow. that. So it reinforced his beliefs. Okay, even okay. though it was just a movie. Okay, that's in, that's an interesting take. Um, if you were to ask me, and I and I like it because I definitely see all the examples you bring in. Definitely, no doubt, more people watching the Passion of the Christ. I remember that when I, came, uh -huh. when I was in high school, and it's inspired a lot of people to be like, "Yep, that's how it happened." And I'm like, "There weren't. I don't even know. I don't even know if there was a single Jewish person in that whole movie. <laughs> Just no. white people beating on other mm -hmm. white people the whole way." like bleached hair and like abs everywhere i'm just like are you sure mm -hmm. it's like okay well uh, you know you got to have a mental image of something but uh not a lot of black people from mesopotamia africa just saying but uh mm -hmm. I, I i am saying also i think like um i feel like movies prey on our ability to want to have a belief and and confirm beliefs that we have that we're looking yeah. for evidence for and movies are a poor substitute for that and i feel like yeah, they can persist it, but I also feel like if it wasn't movies, it'd be something else. And as demonstrated by the fact that religions, those same ideas persisted even before movies existed in the first place. Um, but yeah, mm. can it help? I, I, I definitely say, yeah, it, I wouldn't say it's culpable. I just feel like it's, it's there and, and something else would easily replace it if it wasn't. Dredd, what do you think? 
Yeah, I, I don't know about something else having to be there. Um, you know, again, again, just pointing back to statistics of uh, religiosity, uh, mm. you know, people are moving away from it. So it's not like um, there's a default position where people need to believe in strange and unjustified uh, things. Um, maybe it's, you know, it's a shift, but uh, I don't know that it it's just being re replacing one thing with another. Okay. Okay. I like it. So how about this then? I'll throw out before we had movies, we had folklore and, and when we had folklore, we had epics and we had stories where that we passed on from generations about the Odyssey or like Achilles or like great wars that were only from the perspective of the winners that or sort Gilgamesh. of match. Like, yeah. Right. That's a big one. 300 like things that aggrandize ourselves of like, Oh, we are big and powerful when in reality it was just, you know, maybe the other side got sick and got completely stomped or they didn't show up to the battlefield, but they made an agreement of like, you know what, we're going to say we, we beat off 14,000 people with only three guys. Um, I feel like we do the same thing with legends, you know, Johnny Appleseed, uh, what happened at the Alamo, Davy Crockett, we, we, Samson uh, and the jawbone. <laughs> yeah. We, we take figures from our history. We remove all the bad aspects of them and only try to remember the good. Uh, George Washington, we don't talk about the fact that he slave traded our own people. Like, like we just say, oh, no, that was a great leader who wanted all the ideals for America, despite that he probably didn't want women to vote, only wanted white people with land to have any power in this country, and, and a whole bunch of other terrible stuff. Show him with, like, powdered wigs, even though he's, like, in the middle of the Delaware, like, in this really ornate suit. Like, he probably didn't look like that if he did do that in the first place. But if it I wasn't... Oh, I was just going to say, I read recently that George Washington was actually an inveterate liar. So <laughs> the story about I cannot tell a lie is a story. Yeah, of, yeah, of course. I would like the quality uh, you want a reader to have. I also feel like we will say stories like Benjamin Franklin flying a kite in the middle of the storm and discovering electricity because he got zapped by lightning. Like that would kill a person. Mm -hmm. Like you can, a key isn't enough to stop a lightning bolt, but we believe it even until the point where like we're in adults and it takes effort to like lose that. And so when I say like when a movie supports that, yeah, that sort of thinking is supported with a movie. But if you took movies out, we would still have a lot of other kinds of narratives that we're holding on to. It's that human aren't nature. Yeah, yeah, that aren't evidentially based. I feel like it's a human nature thing to grab onto stuff like that, particularly in this environment. That's what I mean by that. Dread, do you think like, Am I getting closer to a mark? Is this sound more compelling to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I feel like I'm a bit, I'm sorry. I'm just a little distracted because my, uh, my frames, uh, my frame rate skipping and uh, acting up. So, hey, you're coming, you're looking good. What I'm basically saying is humans have cultivated an environment where there are a lot of narrative based stories that are easily mistaken for evidence. Mm -hmm. So if you yes, take out movies, there's going to be so many other crocodiles in the river, if you if you will, that it's like you just took out one grain of sand out of a beach of bad narrative based disguises mm -hmm. for poor evidence that people mm -hmm. go through. Yeah, no, I I, I would agree um, that uh, you know human it's human nature to we're, we're storytellers. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that we have to. Um, I mean, it's a it's a matter of diligence to discern uh, between evidence and narrative, and not conflate the two as they are so often done. Okay, right. and and because of that, that's why I'm not blaming movies for the persistence of religion. What I'm saying is, I can watch a movie, and if I'm told that, hey, this is a work of fiction, have have fun, and you know, when the movie's over, that's when the story ends. Like that's up to me to like know that when I go into a movie. You know, yeah. And, and well, that's it. I mean, that's what I was saying last week is that, you know, as a as a former student graduate of the Vancouver Film School, it kind of ruined me for movies because the suspension of disbelief is not easily accomplished anymore simply because I know how it's done. It's all sets and lights and special sure. effects and 
and uh you know Gollum's a guy with a suit and the little tags all over him and he's jumping around and, <laughs> and then all the expressions and stuff are you know kind of infilled or backfilled you know after the fact right so um you know it's 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 entertaining to to initially but then once i get over the fact that this is how it was all put together it's like yeah it's a, just a big chase story you know that's what the lord of the rings turned to be uh, turned out for me you know sure. six hours of people getting chased across you know the world with a ring you know <laughs> great Dred. thanks for that <laughs> <laughs> i've always but even with the suspension of disbelief i've always appreciated movies for the underlying story that's that they tell about the human condition like i uh, i recently just saw a really great movie called everything everywhere and all at once yeah and, I've heard about it. I've heard and it, good. it is so good but it's not about it's a multiverse movie but it's not about like jumping across universes it's about a relationship between a mother and her family right and like how distant they become and what she's trying to do to pull it back together and i really deeply empathize with that when i was done with that movie i called my mom and just like hey mom i love you like stuff like that makes me feel good whether i know how the movie worked or how i didn't because i recognize yeah. most of the actors in that i was just like oh i know that guy from there he's on youtube and stuff like that but it's not about that <clears throat> it's about the story that you can tell about the human condition and i feel like if you're watching twilight zone or if you're watching any of the movies that do come out that's what I enjoy out of the movies. Like I can suspend the disbelief to a degree. Dread, I'm in the same thing boat as you. Bad CGI is bad CGI. Bad effects are bad effects. But it's really about what is the writer trying to tell me as a parable for like humanity. And that's the stuff that speaks to me the most. And mm -hmm. I can walk out of the movie with that as sort of like the most evidence for like how yeah. we interact with people. And, and I'd like to make a point that these things if it carries a good message a good mom, uh, moral or whatever uh, it doesn't matter whether the story is true or not a parable there you can go. do that yes but at the same time if you try to pass off a parable as as true fact then you start getting into trouble and people find out it's not fact they they question the the parable and the moral right so, yeah. it makes you a, a liar and a fraud when you try to pass off a narrative as evidence mm -hmm. right and uh, i think Oh, go for it. Go for it, Dredd. I was just going to say that uh, not, you know, not all stories with a moral um, are like not all messages are good. So there you go. A, a poor message could be told very, very well. And oh. that I think is what I'm getting to when I say that movies perpetuate uh, religious belief because um you can dress something up you can dress a donkey up to look like a stallion but it's still a donkey right <laughs> <laughs> and how many how many ghost movies are there out exactly, there exactly right? perpetuating this just perpetuate this religion in, but they perpetuate the relief the yeah. the belief in afterlife and yeah and I, continuing on after death and, I definitely and, want... and those are the good good feel stories like ghost or mm -hmm. you know things like that where you know the, at the end when he's resolve the conflicts in the in the storyline he finally goes to see the light and everyone's happy that he's lifted up into heaven and right you know it's crazy so you you guys are tapping onto something i definitely want to go into more in the second half but i also feel like larry you made a really good point where the story can be true or not true it's the it's the morals that we should be looking at and and those are the most useful things like that can be used as places of evidence for how people thought how systems work or what morals they thought were important back in the day. And when I look at the Bible, I see nothing but fantastical stories that have very useless morals because all the morals in the Bible are obey God. That's it. They like yeah. the, 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 the garden of Eden, Noah's tale, like yeah. God came and destroyed all the people on the planet, but he saved a couple of people because those are the people that were that he deemed to be the good most people to follow his commands but i'm like what's the moral of the story oh the moral is listen to god well, well what am i supposed to get out of that there's no yeah. there's no value obedience there. is not morality obedience is 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 just this terrifying thing that you must maintain under threat of drowning to death like the guy in that boat story it's the 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 fact of the matter is is if you don't have a useful moral it doesn't matter how incredible the story is doesn't matter how powerful the characters are in the story you basically have what I find to be a useless narrative because I don't care about the dressings as Larry is putting it. I don't care if the storytelling is true or not. 
I'm trying to figure out what's useful from the, the overall message that the writer is giving me. And if the message is just worship God, I don't, I'm not, you haven't made a good case for it. And I can just move forward with that. Whereas dread, you make a really good point that I like to follow up in that the, you can dress up really, really bad morals in really nice storytelling ways with like great effects and great actors and stuff like that. But the message is still terrible. So like you need to have a good message first, build your narrative around that. And then mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the best way to maintain what I find to be like a right. really good story. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And this would be a good spot to take a break and come back after the station identification and all that. Let's do it. Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Just take a moment to just to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now and have over a thousand members. Uh, we do have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's old city at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. Um, we also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings in case you can't make it to Knoxville or you just don't want to get out. Uh, if you'd like to join us, email us for a link at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to the website at knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. 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 One back. Where do you want to pick up? I always forget if it's don't find one or can't find one or you may not find one. And there are different signs in ASL. So I always have oh. to like be on my toes for that. But uh, today we're going to be talking about narrative versus evidence. And we just did a whole spiel on what we think narrative and evidences are. We think narrative is the art of storytelling, whereas evidence is a tool to support uh, claims for that are testable and can be used to help us under, better understand reality. And while narrative typically has an agency behind it, evidences tend to be far more neutral in what they try to present. And so it's very important for us to be able to distinguish the difference between a narrative versus evidence, because in movies, those are largely narrative based. And there are a series of claims that are very well produced and presented to us in a spectacular fashion that where if we don't remember that we're looking at a narrative, we can use those, you know, films or studies to as evidences and as a bad in, 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 the, in the way of a bad methodology to support uh, terribly produced messages or terribly produced claims. And so in that same light, we're talking about um, sugarcoating bad messages with appealing narratives. And Dread Pirate, you're talking about how that happens in more ways than one. Did you have mm -hmm. examples? What do you mean by, you know, you can hide a really bad message with a good narrative? Well, I mean, there's any number of uh, movies out there mm -hmm. that uh, essentially, you know, they've, they've kind of got the, 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 the message that they want to tell mm -hmm. and they dress it up in the most favorable light so that if you're not discerning of what that narrative is, uh, you may be led to believe it. And right. that, of course, is the essential uh, truth of all religious books. Right. If you buy into the narrative of a religious book, which tells a story and offers no evidence in support of it, um, then you may be lulled into it. And certainly billions and billions and billions of people over time have. Mm. I'll, I'll throw that one too. So Bible notorious for not having any good female characters for the ones who think they do. If you, if you break down their stories, they're all fairly terrible in terms of like female representation and agency of the women who are the main figures of that story. But if you were to look at movies, a lot of movies are written by guys, it's particularly Disney movies. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but it does overlook a lot of potential that the story could have had if it had more influence. And case in point, the Disney princesses 
or more more importantly the the idea of a prince charming who can just come in the third act and not and and basically marry the the female character and that solves basically all the problems it sort of continues to perpetuate this idea that women whatever problem you have whether it's wanting to walk on land and and, <laughs> and live life or leave your tribe that you were born into or become I don't know, like uh, some sort of like queen where you can have all your answers solved and no longer be a maid. All you got to do is marry a man. That's it. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Find a nice Prince Charming for yourself and figure that out. Whether you're like being raised by seven doors or anything else, it's like marry a man. It solves all your problems. That's it. Yeah. You know, and it's funny you should say that. I was just uh, listening to um, a podcast, uh, Origins podcast, hosted by Lawrence Krauss Mm. with Neil deGrasse Tyson. And oh, nice. he goes back into the origins of, of Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he re- recalled, uh, you know, in school, how boys and girls were pigeonholed by a questionnaire uh, where they were asked, you know, what kind of careers would you be interested in? Mm. And, you know, of course, boys, the typical things would be like firemen, policemen, um, you know, some of these very you know, common vocations for aspiring young, young boys. And for uh, women, it was um, mother, homemaker, mm, hairdresser, sure. waitress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Waitress. laughs> I've got a career. I, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the stigma I, that comes I, with it, but go for it. I just, I was going to, I was, something occurred to me. Um, and that is that narratives, and evidence address two forms of questions, right? So a narrative answers what if questions and evidence answers why does questions. Oh, interesting. Uh, I I can see that. I can see some nuance in there. I like that. I like that. Uh, Larry, I'm going to throw this out at you. The idea that movies can sometimes wrap up bad messages with really great production values. Do you have examples of something like that happening from your recollection? Maybe if you'd given me that at the beginning of the show. Hey, you got <laughs> and it. And ask me now. No. Um, Welcome to the hot seat, Larry. Bad mess. Well, I think that you you nailed it with the Disney movies, but um, <clears throat> it's just, uh, it's hard to think of any right off the spot. Uh, Normally what I get is like... Yourself. Go ahead. I get those weird sports movies where it's like the guy, the coach is, he, he believes in God. He's a nice guy. And he talks to his pastor and just like, listen, I'm just some underdog coach. And the other teams, they have this huge budget and this big program. I'm just a God fearing man. What can I do with mm-hmm. just me, my gumption and this group of misfit kids It's like, all you got to do kids is follow me to church and pray with yeah. me and you will win that yeah. touchdown. You'll get that score point. You can yeah, do the sports yeah. ball thing. And they all pray yeah. in the last inning and yeah. they get it. And they're like, yeah, we did it. It's like, great. It reminds oh, me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The last three remind. minutes is all in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Running across the finish line. And, and like as yeah. a kid, you watch that and you're like, oh, okay, well, I, I like that movie because there was a bunch of, you know, really nice music and songs. But as an adult, you watch it, particularly as an atheist, you're like, wow, this is just pre- proselytism in, yeah. in oh, Mighty yeah. Ducks, basically, or yeah. something yeah. like that. And there was uh, a movie when I was growing up uh, called uh, The Cross and the Switchblade. Yes, Cross and yeah. the Switchblade. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you were thinking of? Yeah. No, I, I was thinking of another one that's actually currently in production. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so. As I, I might have mentioned, um, I, I do work uh, on set security mm-hmm. uh, and one of the ones, it's actually one of the largest productions of all the ones, there's like 35 productions currently uh, on the go in the lower mainland of Vancouver. Um, and the biggest production with the biggest budget is one called The Scriptures. And it's uh, and it's a series being uh, produced and filmed right now. So, okay, I'll tell you I'll tell you two other things too that I, I, I that I like. Could wait could, first. Could you tell me what the cross and switchblade is? Because I don't know what that is all oh, about. Oh, what it was is that? Pat Boone. I think it was a priest, and uh, he went into the slums of New York City and and uh, you know, converted people, mainly the gang members that were there, okay. and brought them to Christ. Yeah, we have a uh, Hispanic version of that down here in Texas called Out Cry in the Barrio, but it's essentially it's the same story told about mm-hmm. Mexican Americans. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, there is a church that does live productions every Easter of the resurrection of or and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, mm. but they they flanderize it by making parodies of local of the most popular movies that have come out. So there's a Marvel Cinematic Universe version of the crucifix of Jesus Christ, except this time it's Iron Man, and it's like Loki's the one that stabs him in the chest. And then there's and then they make songs about it. And it's like them and it's very highly produced. They have multiple camera angles. It takes place in a mega church. So like there's a full crowd of people singing, there's lights, there's costumes and all that stuff. They'll do a Lord of the Rings version of the crucifix the next year. They'll do a Twilight version of the Lord of the uh, they'll do a Star Trek version, a James Bond movie. And they release their videos online to great appeal. Of course, they sell them too. But in my head, it's the sort of thing where it's like you're wrapping up a fun production or you have like this sugar-coated fun production around what is essentially uh, a man sacrificing himself and really his own son for to make up for rules that he made up in the first place mm -hmm. because he's mm -hmm. unwilling to forgive people without a right. human sacrifice. And you're just like, why do we, how did we normalize that? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's yeah, it's it's a uh M, &M coating inside over a Skittle, basically. You're just like, what? No, no, no. It's a Skittle with an M on it. Um, all right, Joe Sky, putting you on the same hot seat. Did you have examples of movies with bad messages but good productions? Um, well, any movie that promotes belief in an afterlife, I think, could go into that category. Sure. Uh, probably one of the most sensational movies I ever saw like that was Poltergeist. Ooh. It was a very engaging story. It was a good ghost story, but it promoted, one, it promoted that belief in the afterlife, and two, it tried to ascribe a moral meaning. And I think that it detracted from the movie as a whole by trying to give it a moral that you don't desecrate the dead. Right, right. The dead are dead. Yeah, and, and more power to them. <laughs> <laughs> the dead are dead. I feel like there are also sci-fi movies that obscure science or don't do any favors oh, in terms huge. of explaining oh, yeah. complex scientific terms or simplify them to the point where that becomes the new mainstream way of explaining what is truly a much more complex idea and you've actually only muddled the waters even more so than what religion could have done yeah, uh, yeah. one of the things i hate when i was watching a movie and i think it's a nice hybrid of the two in terms of religious selling and obfuscation of science is obfuscation. contact obfuscation contact with jody foster is that who was yep. in there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember watching that movie and I was like, oh, everyone I know loves this movie. I'm going to watch this movie. And there's like scenes in the movie where she's like, hey, I got contacted by like this, you know, uh, interstellar species that gave us instructions. I think we should build this thing. And then she's bringing this up in Senate and the Senate's like, well, tell me before you send yourselves out, how do you feel religiously? And I'm like, and the yeah. lady's like, no, I don't have, I don't know what I have, how that applies to anything. It's like, you got to believe in God. I'm just like, why is this a message in the story? I thought it was a uh, idea of like, oh, the Senate is so politically and religiously based that they want her to be religious. But like they, the movie's going to play that off as like, no, obviously I wouldn't need that. You can build this with entirely secular minded ideals. But the movie was flipped that on its head. It's well, like, no, she has to have a religious experience. That's the whole idea of the contact in the first place. I'm just like, what? No. Larry, well, what's I up? mean, Carl. Yeah, Sagan, I, 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 I think I, I think Carl Sagan just wanted to in, interject this uh, yeah. combat between science and religion into absolutely. the story, so that he could address it. Yeah, and and I absolutely agree with you, Larry. Um, and um, you know, unfortunately, I disagree with you, Ty. It wasn't uh, it wasn't to you know suggest that she ought to have a religious uh, or be an ambassador for the people of Earth who believe in religion. And that was a, a pretty poignant point that I thought was uh, very good of Carl Sagan to have included in that story because he could have done without it. Yeah. Um, but the story I thought was actually made better by the fact that that was uh, the reason he uh, she was overlooked in favor of the, the first guy 
who got killed and you know subsequently there was the second machine and she got to go so i i, I actually thought that the inclusion of that was actually pretty yeah. poignant. but I, I, I would throw this yeah. out as as a christian who watched that the first time i saw that as a good thing that she didn't get the role and that the guy who was a christian did so yeah. i i think but, the she, movie could, but she went out in the end right that's 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 and where was, the turnaround came. But then there was this other thing where she meets her dead dad and she's like talking to like this figure who died who and it's like, is that a soul experience? And I'm like, what did this have to do with the science? Right? Like I was no. sold as a Christian a science movie. I and we can we can debate the merits of uh, <laughs> for sure, but I was just like, I was sold a science movie, but yeah, got qu caught in the quagmire of religion. And as a Christian, I didn't really complain too much, but I was like, oh, but I wanted a sci-fi experience. And instead I watched what was it? primer instead and got like yeah. ah there's my itch scratched i got a i got a science movie and i and i saw a science movie and that's all i wanted but <laughs> i i got sold politics yeah and, but you're a scientist well, that's, <laughs> that's the difference between <laughs> cosmos and contact mm, one's mm. a science-based yeah. information show which was had really great production excellent, values, excellent. and the other mm. one was this was a narrative I'd say this, if anyone built a machine, right, there's zero guarantee, and Larry, maybe you might support me on this, uh, that you will, you will meet your dead dad at the end of an intergalactic tunnel and have a conversation with him about like how awesome life is in the afterlife. Well, the, I, mean, just I like, thought what they made it pretty doing? plain in the movie that they took the concept of her dad uh, from her mind and, and presented yes. themselves in that venue so that yeah. she would more relate to them. And, and actually, this was, it, yeah, and this was actually explained by Androyan, who was his, uh, Carl Sagan's wife, uh -huh. um, is that Carl did not, uh -huh. purposely did not want to show the aliens, because we anthropomorphize right. our ideas mm -hmm. of uh -huh. what aliens may look like. Just watch any Star Trek episode. Uh -huh. Everything's uh -huh. bipedal, two eyes, a nose, a mouth, but they got bumps and lumps and places and, on their head. And breathe oxygen and it's the same things we do. Yeah. yeah and that's and that's why and that's why carl uh said he didn't want to show the aliens um and that's why the uh the father thing came in okay very very cool uh there was also a movie that will smith was in uh that was about the nature of cet or uh concussions that football players get when they uh run into a number of head injuries during a game uh -huh. of football uh i forgot the name of the game of the of the the movie but I do remember watching it and only getting through the first act because it sets up the, the doctor that Will Smith plays as this belligerent person who's looking for things to fix in his life and eventually runs into his pastor who's like, listen, if you want to fix something and you're like into the sports things, I got an idea for you. One, why don't you get a nice little lady? I got lots of ladies here that come to my congregation. You can figure this out. And then you just calm down a little bit. You're always so agitated. It's like, no. I have this idea about brains and I think we should make better helmets. Like you're freaking out too much. Come, come to my congregation. You'll meet a lady. And I'm like, I, I like the act one structure where it's like, everyone's telling this guy to like settle down and, and his, and his, his, uh, I guess his pastor's acting like a pimp for him, basically <laughs> trying to set him up. And yeah. that's the beeline story. And I thought the beeline story is going to completely dismiss when he figures out that NFL is like, actively trying to like dismiss this research that he's doing but instead it does both stories it's one of like him fighting for it and then two his pastor totally hooking him up with another lady <laughs> and them coming to terms with god and then and through his his desire to be a better person through god he he lucks out and his research like takes over and like helps to like win the 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 narrative of nfl changing i'm just like you have the science just stick with the science you know, mm -hmm. you didn't need a you didn't need to sugarcoat it with all this other stuff around it because then when people take the science, they pick up all this extra baggage along with it. And I feel like contact had the same thing. Maybe I can maybe maybe we can uh, uh, I can rewatch that movie and change my opinion on that, and I'll come back to that. But I feel like it'd be nice to just have science movies that are just science movies because yeah. I feel like science is cool enough. I feel like science is cool enough. You could take it. Um, the best so science movie. Go for it. Well, I was just going to say that some of these things are superfluous, right? Like there you, uh, you could tell a story about the thing that happened without the superfluous notion 
that God had something to do with it. <laughs> sure. Or just construct your narrative to where you've made it clear that the science doesn't matter. Like you can make it like Jurassic Park one where it's like, it's about dinosaurs. There's stuff going around and there's families and, and, and there's people chase, but it's about the dinosaurs. So like, just let me sit down for the dinosaurs or you can make it like where it's Looper where you literally say to the camera, the, the science doesn't matter. <laughs> or, or like time, oh, time travel is organic. It doesn't really matter. You're thinking too hard about it. I'm like, okay, great. Now I can turn my brain off and just enjoy the message of the story and and like and understand it as it is. But don't give me both at the same time because I one is easier to swallow than the other. It's like you gave me an aspirin and a ping pong ball, and you're like, enjoy these two things. It's like, no, I'm gonna do one or the other. Just yeah. me. Sorry for that small rant, guys. Guys, what do you uh, make of the the myth that's promulgated in so many movies that you have to be in a relationship to be a complete person yeah i hate that too i really really despise that right right i agree i feel like it's really toxic because there are a lot of people that function entirely well single in my head Mm -hmm. or demonstrably so uh larry so do we have any messages from or questions from the audience that you have you holding on to any of those over there Jed, are you? What? Questions? No, what no, um, no. I don't have anything on the live stream right now. Uh, Low Ma is mm-hmm. on, and a couple other people who haven't identified themselves. But uh, okay, cool. Okay. So I'd say as a takeaway, messages can be given in uh, narratives, whereas evidence can support claims. Uh, know what you're dealing with, and don't substitute one for the other. And yeah. while suspension of disbelief is potentially very difficult or enjoyable if you get really good at it just know how to turn it on and off right and know when it is on and off like well and recognize that that's what you're doing exactly right and awareness of that you're suspending your disbelief that's critical because if you don't then you're conflating evidence with narrative and and that's where the problem comes in and I even got, though somebody's telling you a very engaging and well done story, doesn't mean that the components of the story actually exist. Right. Um, and you know, um, go ahead. There's a really great idea of like getting the message out. There's a good student indie film about Christians who invent a time machine. They go back in time and they see not the events of the Bible, but the people writing the stories of the Bible right. in a council. Yeah. They, they, I think it's council in Geneva or something like that, or Genea. And it's literally just people writing the story there. And they're like, well, where's the thing happening? It's like, it's just the people in the room writing it down. Yeah, and they're like, story. oh yeah. no, this yeah. is all foolery. And they- You're, you're, just, you're talking about the council of Nicaea. There it is, Nicaea. Nicaea. They yeah, go yeah. to that yeah. time <laughs> and they just watch these people argue. It's like, what? let's put this yeah. story in. Nah, that one's too lame. Okay, what about this one? I pulled it from this group of people. It's like, yeah, sure, we'll put that in. That's fine. It's just politics at the end of the day. And then at that point, they destroy the time machine so that nobody knows that that is actually how it was put together. But that's the message of the story isn't so much like that 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 happened. It's that people, when faced typically with things that they don't want to have to be the truth or the hard questions, may cover it up. And that's also part of our human condition, too. And it was a terrifying like yeah. horrifying awakening moment when I was writing yeah. the movie. Right. Anyway, you can get well, people to. have no problems thinking that if the if preachers today were to write some kind of supernatural story, that it would just be a story. But they don't project that into the past and say the preachers did that in the past as well. Right. They right. write these supernatural stories and pass them down generation to generation through a lot of superstitious people to get to yep. us, and we accept them as real. Mm. Go on, Dred. I was I was going to say, you know, I've heard this said. I've heard this said many times, is that um, if anyone in current times wrote a story where the principal actor was like Jesus in the Bible, nobody would buy the book. It would be boring. Mm, There's no arc. There's no story arc. Mm -hmm. It's completely an uninteresting character because he never changes. Let's do, uh, I love that point. It's true. Gotta, Perfect, from, the, make it from the get-go. <laughs> and that's why I don't like Dr. Strange, by the way, because he has a Jesus complex. We even have a term um, for it. We don't even like it. But uh, Dred, do you have yeah. any final words on today's show? And anything Well, like uh, I'll, I'll just plug my channel. I, uh, I have my channel, Mind Pirate, which is on uh, YouTube, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. Uh, check it out. If you like it, subscribe and help me build it up. Nice. Uh, Joe Sky, anything you'd like to plug and any final words? 
Uh, yeah, I have the Novafidian Chronicles page on Facebook, and today's post is already up because I got up early. On Sundays, we do Go Home Bible, You're Drunk, and it's just Bible contradictions and impossibilities. Nice. Uh, What's the name of that Facebook page? Uh, yeah, I, ha I have a Facebook page, and I write about I write about all kinds of things. I try to make them atheist relevant, but yeah, he was asking for the name of it. Yeah, the, the name of the page. The Nullifidian Chronicles. That's easy to say, at least. Nullifidian. Yeah, at least it's an easy to find Facebook group. <clears throat> it's a fancy word for atheist. Okay. Oh, I'll, my final words is I'll admit I'm wrong on a bunch of stuff, but I did not like Contact the Movie, but I will rewatch it again to get the narrative that was <laughs> settled out. Because, you know, I did watch it as a Christian. I'll watch it again as an atheist and see if I appreciate it more. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of movies I should do that. It's, it's surprising, you know, how that changes. Yeah. And I'll appreciate yeah. narratives with different mindsets. So I'll apply mm -hmm. what we were talking about in the show today. You right. can find myself at Let's Chat. Larry. Oh, my contact can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to go there and click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter 5 or Digital Free Thought Radio. And you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon uh, in paperback or um, audio, not audio, uh, digital. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com, and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind and need some help, uh, you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. Cool. Nice show, everybody.